Hello Madera Church, this is Pastor Bill and as you can see I'm out here again at our church property and I'd like to come out here and to pray for you guys but I'd also like to just share a brief update. Hopefully by now you have heard that we are online only this weekend. If you're watching this, this is the intro to our online service and so just welcome. Um, just if you didn't receive the email, one of the reasons why we're meeting uh, online only this week is because of the number of people who aren't available this weekend. Uh, we have so many key leaders out, uh, myself included, that it would be very difficult to uh, to do a mobile church service. And a uh, big thank you for all of you that showed up this past uh, Sunday, January 2nd, to help put away all the Christmas decor and put away the, uh, the gear for our church. Um, you guys learned firsthand that it takes a small army to really pull off a mobile service. And so as a result of that, uh, we've opted to just go ahead and, and take this weekend uh, off from meeting in person. But we still want to give you an opportunity to explore God's Word and to even have a time of worship in your homes. And so uh, what I'm going to be doing today, rather than preparing and giving a new message, we're going to go ahead and wait and start our series through the Gospel of Mark next week on January 15th. And so we'll be starting uh, that message series that we've entitled Following Jesus, An Adventure Worth Taking. And we've already started off this year in a, a new way, uh, but we want to be flexible as a church and just follow God's lead. And so that's what we're doing this weekend. And one of the things that came to mind to me uh, as I was thinking about what to do for this weekend was a message that I gave, uh, the second online message we ever had from Madera Church. And uh, I'm guessing that ma the majority of you weren't even a part of Madera Church yet. Maybe you haven't even heard of us when that was given. And it's a, a message that I needed to be reminded of and encouraged by. And uh, it's a simply entitled, When Overwhelmed. And it's a brief look at uh, David's encouragement and uh, God's teaching through him through Psalm 40. And so a uh, brief message from Psalm 40, uh, some encouraging words, hopefully from God's truth for your heart to apply. And then we're going to go ahead and also share just a few of our uh, pre-recording uh, worship songs. Uh, if you want to keep uh, letting the video play after the, the message, or maybe you want to skip to this worship through song portion, uh, we encourage you to do that. We have three songs uh, mostly from Victor and one from Victor and Autumn together. So uh, church, just know that uh, you're loved, uh, that I'm praying for you today uh, here from our property. I do that often. And I'm, I'm looking forward to 2022. It started again in a very interesting way, uh, but I think God's at work and I'm excited to see what he's going to do through this new church uh, in this community. So know that you're loved, know that you're prayed for, and I hope to see all of you on January 15th. Blessings. Bye. Have you ever been afraid? I'm talking about the kind of fear that makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. I can remember several instances in my life where, where that was the case, and I'd like to share one of those with you this morning. It was several years ago when I was uh, hunting in Colorado. My family actually uh, would do several hunting trips when I was a small boy. I grew up going to the same location, and later in life I began to hunt there as well, and I was hunting for bull elk just between Montrose, uh, Colorado, and Telluride, right in the Uncompadre National Forest. And instead of this particular morning going to a place that I was familiar with, I decided to explore an area that I'd never been to before, a place that had a watering hole that I could see from an aerial map. And I thought that if I could get there by the time the sun was, uh, was coming up that morning, that I would have a great chance to see a deer or an elk. And, and so I was excited to try this new location out. And so I got up early in the morning and began to march through the woods in the darkness of night. And I had sticks poking me in the side and I was tripping over limbs. And, and it was a little bit further than I anticipated. I was having to go up and down these ravines. And so as I was approaching and I thought I was getting closer to this watering hole, the sun was already coming up. In fact, it was starting to, to peek over the mountains and it was hitting the aspen trees and the, the yellow leaves were just glistening in the rising sun. And I can remember just at that moment, as I was just in awe of the beauty around me, I heard what I was hoping to hear, the sound of a bull elk bugling. And so I go into my hunting sneak mode, you know, kind of stalking to that location. I'm not really great at uh, elk calls yet at that point. And so I decided that I would just try to get as close as I could to where that, that bugle was coming from. 
And so I was now walking in a different way. I was being very careful with each step and I was trying not to make any noise. And so not letting those, those limbs trip me up anymore. And I was so focused on getting to that location where that bugle was coming from and looking at each step that I was kind of ignoring everything else around me. And soon I found myself, as I was getting closer and closer to that uh, elk where it was bugling from, I found myself in the middle of some timber that had three black bears. Now they were, they were cubs, they weren't full grown. And at first it was just an awesome experience. It was the first time that I ever had been so close in person to a black bear. Uh, to these cu cubs as they played on, on both sides of me. And I was just kind of taking it in. And, and I was thinking about getting my, trying to get my phone out so I could take some video or some photos. And at that moment, my sense of awe and wonder of these beautiful creatures quickly changed to fear. I remembered all the articles that I've read as a kid and growing up about guys that get between a cub and a mama bear. And here I am between three cubs, and I had no idea where that mama bear was at. But soon after that thought entered my mind, this crashing in the timber happened down below me, uh, just a, a few, maybe 30 yards away. And at that moment, the fear struck into my heart. That hair stood up on the back of my neck. And I'm not necessarily proud to share what happened next. I wish that I would have just, you know, been man enough to stand my ground and to be ready if that was a bear that was going to come out. Because I'll tell you, I don't know what it was. For all I know, it could have been a huge bull elk coming out. But because I was just gripped with this fear, I did something that uh, I've never done before. I I, like Jesus, walked on water. No, I'm just teasing. But I, I hightailed it out of there. I, I ran out of there quickly because I was concerned that this was a mama bear coming to protect her cubs. As we're facing these interesting days, it's tempting to allow the fear within us about what might happen in the future to grip us, so much so that it causes us to do things that don't represent God very well. Maybe something that's outside our, of our character. And today what I want us to do is to look at God's truth and see that He tells us how we can respond in moments of fear. In fact, you've probably heard maybe a pastor or a friend share with you recently that as Christ followers, we need not fear because God is with us. In fact, the Bible shares that truth hundreds of times because it's a reality. It's something that we should hold on to. But the truth still remains that there are moments when our hearts are tempted to give in to the fear that is closing in on us. And so today I'd look, like to look at a passage of scripture that deals with that, that talks about how we can respond when we're overwhelmed with what life is bringing us. And so if you have a Bible, I encourage you to go ahead and turn with me to Psalm chapter 40. Now this is in the book of Psalms, chapter 40. And typically, this particular Psalm is broken into two parts. Usually when people look at this, they take the first 10 verses and look at it as a, a song of thanksgiving from David. And then the last half, 11 to 17, is seen more of a plea for God's deliverance. And we're going to read the whole thing together this morning, but uh, what I want us to do is look at it a little differently. Oftentimes when someone teaches through Psalm 40, what they'll do is they'll read the first 10 verses and then they'll stop. As you'll see as we go through it, there's incredible truth within it to hone in on. But right now, what I'd like for us to do is, is look at this psalm and a couple other verses within it. I'm going to give you the, the truth that I think is within it, even before we dive in. There's, there's three areas that I think that David reveals to us through this psalm. Number one, that we can remember the way that God has helped us in the past as a way to overcome fear that comes into our life. When we're overwhelmed, one of the first things we should do is remember the way God has helped us in the past. And maybe you don't have a lot of stories uh, where God has done that for you. Then I encourage you to go to God's truth and, and see how he works with his people. You can look at Hebrews 11, which is a great list of people who live by faith and who God shows up for in miraculous, incredible ways. But for, for most of us, just consider how has God worked on your behalf in the past? That's a good starting point when you're feeling overwhelmed. Next, the challenge is to find joy in doing his will right now, in the present, today. How can, in this moment, even though I'm overwhelmed, how can I do God's will for me today? 
And lastly, the challenge is to trust God with your future, to, to not be overwhelmed by what might happen, but realize that you have a God that is with you in the hard times and that he wants to be with you in the future as well. And so he has that mapped out for you as you walk with him. It doesn't mean we'll be absent of trouble, but it does mean God will always be with us. So let's look at this in Psalm 40 together. Starting in verse 1, this is again from David. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me, and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of my despair, out of the mud and the mire. Maybe you feel just overwhelmed today. God can do this same thing for you. He will hear your cry, and he can pull you up out of the situation that you find yourself in. David goes on to say, He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. And, and it could be that he's referring to this particular psalm because Psalm 40 is a song to the Lord. But it could be that he's thinking back to another situation. And in Psalm 32, where we see David is just singing a praise of God's forgiveness because of his, uh, his sin against the Lord and how God forgave him. And so he's, he's focusing in on that song that he's given him. But he praises God, even in the midst of this, this difficult situation. goes on to say, Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Oh, the joys of those who trust the Lord, who have no confidence in the proud, or in those who worship idols. O oh, Lord my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. He recalls who God is and what God has done. Do you notice in the midst of this what else he brings to the surface? Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Just want to remind you, if you have a relationship with Jesus today, the way that you respond in the midst of a difficult situation is a testimony to others. It's an opportunity for God to represent Himself through you. And so we should consider how we're responding in the midst of scary times, in the midst of things that are unknown and overwhelming. He goes on to say in verse 6, You take no delight in sacrifices or offerings. Now that you have made me listen, I finally understand. You don't require burnt offerings or sin offerings. Then I said, Look, I have come. As it is written about me in the scriptures, I take joy in doing your will, my God, for your instructions are written on my heart. So we've come to the first two points. The first thing that David does is he remembers the way that God helped him in the past, the way he pulled him out of that pit, the way that he took him and forgave him and gave him a new song to sing. But then in this verse, he claims this reality that he's going to do God's will, to choose to live for God in the present. Verse 8, I take joy in doing your will, my God, for your instructions are written on my heart. David knew the truth of the Old Testament. He had it memorized, and it was what directed his steps. God's truth was what directed his path. And when life got scary, when he didn't know what to do, he leaned into that truth to direct his steps, to, to claim the promise that we don't need to fear because God is with us. In verse 9, he continues to remind us that God can use our suffering, our situation, to point others to him. He says, I have told all your people about your justice. I have not been afraid to speak out. As you, O Lord, well know, I have not kept the good news of your justice hidden in my heart. I have talked about your faithfulness and saving power. I have told everyone in the great assembly of your unfailing love and faithfulness. God has impacted David's life, and he tells everybody about it. That's something I want to encourage us to do. While you're feeling overwhelmed, realize that other people in the world are too. But you have an opportunity to share with them the, the hope that Jesus has given you, the difference that he's made in your life, the way that he has showed up in the past, and the way that you're choosing to live for him in the present. Will you do that in this current situation? That is typically where most people stop when they study Psalm 40. It's a great reminder of the way that God works and how we should represent Him. But the psalm continues, and it's, it's actually a song. And, and this section is a little hard to tackle because it's a Hebrew poem. And so they take this contrast between good and bad, and, and, it, and English doesn't make a lot of sense to us. But let's look at it. In verse 11, he says, 
Lord, don't hold back your tender mercies from me. Let your unfailing love and faithfulness always protect me. Maybe that's a prayer that we could pray right now. Lord, don't hold back your tender mercies from me. Let your unfailing love and faithfulness always protect me. For troubles surround me, too many to count. My sins pile up so high, I can't see my way out. They outnumber the hairs on my head. I have lost all courage. So here's David, somebody who trusts God, who believes in God, who's seen as a person after God's own heart, who messes up a lot. And in this moment is admitting that he's lost his courage, that he needs God to help him. It's okay to admit that, God, we need you in this moment. He confesses his sin in this moment. He says it's, it's too numerous to count. We need to own our shortcomings and give those to the Lord. God is quick to forgive and to, to give us a new start, but we have to be willing to bring it to him in order for him to forgive. Verse 13 goes on to say, Please, Lord, this is kind of the area that's a little interesting. Please, Lord, rescue me. Come quickly, Lord, and help me. Verse 14, may those who try to destroy me be humiliated and put to shame. May those who take delight in my trouble be turned back in disgrace. Let them be horrified by their shame. For they said, aha, we've got him now. He's just sharing the people who he wants vindication from, who are his enemies. And this is really, again, this is Hebrew poetry right now that is giving a contrast between the good and the bad. Let's look at the good that comes next. Verse 16, but may all who search for you be filled with joy and gladness in you. May those who love your salvation repeatedly shout, the Lord is great. As for me, since I am poor and needy, let the Lord keep me in his thoughts. You are my helper and my savior. Oh my God, do not delay. David closes by asking God to to show up on his behalf. What he's doing here is he's trusting God with his future. I don't have the the time today to really dig into this verse by verse like I would like to, but here's the truth that I want to resonate within our hearts. When we face an overwhelming situation, we can do just like David has done. Remember the way that God has helped us in the past— Focus on God's role in our deliverance from those past struggles. And secondly, to find joy in doing His will. Choose to live for God in the present. Allow Him to work through you. Share with others the way He's working in you. And then trust God with your future. Give the Lord your problems and stop trying to overcome them on your own. One of the things that often results in us being overwhelmed by fear is anxiety. We just are crippled with these anxious thoughts about what might happen. And I want to challenge us to consider what God's Word says about anxiety in His Word. In 1 Peter 5 verse 7 it says, Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. I want to give you a little illustration this morning, one that I think at least helps me to wrestle with this truth. This is uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, if I've got it in the frame, but this is a, a water jug. And let's say that this water jug represents our anxiety, maybe some burden or struggle or some overwhelming situation that you have in your life. And our temptation is, is to hold our struggle with a tight grip, to focus on it. And what I want you to see here in a moment is the longer you hold it on your own, the harder it becomes to hold, the more that it impacts you. Eventually, if I was to hold this for for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, my hand would start to violently shake. It would just overwhelm me. I wouldn't be able to think about anything else. And that's what happens when we hold on to anxiety and fear in our hearts. What God wants us to do is to to not have such a tight grip on those troubles, but instead to release them to Him to allow him to take those, to, and you know, figuratively for us to set it at the foot of the cross where he can take on those burdens, those cares, where he's able to meet us in our, in our just grief or suffering or struggle or fear, whatever it might be. Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. He can handle them. He's big enough to take those from you. Will you give it to him today? Ephesians 5, verse 15 through 17 says this. This is a passage of Scripture that's talking about living by the Holy Spirit's power within you. 
And I think that for, for many of us, that's what we need to realize, that this is not something you can do on your own to overcome this anxiety and this fear. We need to let God in us work through us in these times. But in this verse it says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. That's my challenge for us to consider today. In the midst of the fear that we're experiencing, what does God want us to do? How does he want us to do his will today? After we remember how he's taken care of us in the past, how do we get to this, this area of trusting him with the future by living for him today? I have a friend who's a pastor out in Texas, and I shared this with our E-Free Church family recently. Uh, pastor Michael Kraft said these words to encourage his congregation. It helped me to wrestle with this a little bit. And as I share this, I realize that every situation is different out there today. There are people who have lost jobs because of the virus that's going around, and so you have that extra anxiety on your shoulders. There's people who have loved ones who are sick or who have lost loved ones, whether from the virus or not, and you have to just grieve in a different way right now because you can't be with your loved ones. And so I don't want to be insensitive to that reality. But I do think that what uh, Michael says here is an encouragement to me to consider how I can live in these days. He says this, uh, consider this as a season to steward rather than a sentence to endure. I think if we're looking at this as just something we have to endure, then our perspective might miss what God can do within this season. I think that God can use us in tremendous ways. As a pastor, I've had uh, dozens, maybe, maybe hundreds of people over the course of my ministry who have told me that they wish they would spend more time with God, but they're just too busy. They just have too many things on the calendar, too many uh, appointments, too many uh, sporting activities for kids and, and school activities and all these different things that fill up their day. And they're not able to spend time in the Word like they would want or spend time alone with God in prayer to, to practice Psalm 4610 that says, be still and know that I'm God. Here's an opportunity to do that, to, to even though these are trying times, to allow this to be a time that we steward a season to steward rather than a sentence to endure. In fact, when it talks about anxiety in Philippians, it reminds us to, uh, in chapter 4, verse 6, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And so God's antidote, if you want to call it that, for anxiety is prayer. So let's be people of prayer. Let's find ways to pray. I love this quote from Philip Yancey when it comes to prayer. He wrote a book about prayer. And this is something that he said that I think is a picture of what you're doing when you pray for others, when you pray on behalf of others, and they don't even know that you're praying for them. He says this, The purest form of love is given with no expectation of return. Measured by this standard, earnest prayer for others is a magnificent act of love. We can love others today by, by praying for them, by lifting them up, those who are uh, in the medical field that are on the front lines of this virus. Let's pray for them. Those who have to go to work and don't get to stay home, that work at the grocery stores or are truck drivers or whatever it might be, let's pray for them. Those who are making big decisions that will impact our whole country and the government or our local level uh, with our, our, our governor, let's pray for them. For your church leaders, pray for them. Commit this to the Lord and see how God will work in the midst of this season. I'll close, I'll really close this time, with 1 Peter 5 that we've already read. It says, Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. It goes on to say this, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Here's the reality. God is the one who can help you overcome this, but the enemy wants your fear to turn into anxiety. He doesn't want you to turn to God in the midst of it. He doesn't want it to strengthen your prayer life and to allow God to be with you like God promises he will. It goes on to say, stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters, listen to this because it's true of us today. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are growing, going through the same kind of suffering that you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, 
He will restore, support, and strengthen you. He will place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen. God is with you in the midst of this situation. Will you let him in? Will you remember the ways that he's delivered you from struggles in the past? Will you commit to live for him today, right now in the present? And will you trust him with your future? Let's pray together. Father God, we recognize that we are in interesting times. And Lord, I want to pray for those right now who might be listening, who have lost jobs, who have lost loved ones, who do know people who have this virus or, or any other number of struggles, Lord. I pray that you would help us not to be anxious in the midst of all these sufferings and hard things that we're going through, but instead, Lord, that you would help us to turn to you, realizing that you care for us and that you have not promised to take the troubles away, but you have promised to be with us in the midst of them. Help us to be people who our first response is to go to you. Lord, help us to pray for others. Help us to love our community, our neighbors, our leaders in that way by being people of prayer. I pray, God, that you could help us to turn this into a season that we steward for you and for your glory rather than something that we simply have to endure. We thank you for loving us, Lord. We thank you for an opportunity to spend some time together this morning. I pray that you would go before us and help us to live for you. I pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
is calling Have you come to the end of yourself Do you thirst for the drink from the well Jesus is calling Oh come to the altar The Father's arms are open and wide Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come to late, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, what a Savior Is in He
bow down before Him, for He is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bear your cross as you wait for crown tell the world of the treasure you found Let's 
justice and praise Become my embrace To love you from the inside out Everlasting Your light will shine Where no last face Never ending Your glory goes beyond all things And the cry of my heart Is to bring you praise from the end Everlasting, your light will shine when.